We turn overseas tonight and to a new terror attack, and authorities are now saying the strategy looked a lot like Paris. Tonight, ISIS now claiming responsibility for the seven gunmen in the heart of Jakarta, Indonesia. The gunmen targeting Westerners, striking this Starbucks during rush hour, a police station, a shopping center as well. There was panic in the streets, police shielding themselves behind a car. ABC's chief global affairs correspondent, Martha Raditz, with the images coming in. The seven attackers, believed to be affiliated with ISIS, were armed with an arsenal of handguns, grenades, and homemade bombs. At 10.50 a.m., the first explosions, two bombs tossed into a Starbucks. Panicked customers flee. The attackers open fire. A Canadian outside killed. Moments later, a second wave. Two attackers there, hiding by the trees, blow themselves up. As police swarm the busy shopping area, a brazen display, one of the gunmen firing randomly as he moves steadily and directly towards police officers. 11 a.m. now, more suicide attackers, two of them, descend on a police traffic post, killing one passerby and wounding a police officer. With rumors of more attacks, the streets, including those near the U.S. Embassy nearby, shut down. Police searching buildings, Americans told to shelter in place. It would be nearly five hours later before it was all over. And Martha is with us live tonight. Martha, this was awful. Two dead, 20 wounded, but with seven heavily armed attackers, this could have been much worse. It, it could have, David. It does seem clear the attackers wanted a Paris-style rampage. There had been warnings in Jakarta of a credible threat, and there were thousands of extra security forces on the streets, which may well have saved lives. The work, though, in this room reveals one of the most shocking developments ever known about Islamic State. They're converting a missile from a jet fighter and making it into a surface-to-air missile. If you'd like to subscribe please click on the link.